Now that it's running, let's enter our serial numbers. The first serial number is for Alpha 5 itself. You don't need to enter this if you're using a standalone application server, but remember we decided to install a full copy here. With the first serial number installed and activated, we'll create a new empty database. This is just a dummy database so we can begin using Alpha 5. We'll put this in a folder called Alpha 5 and we'll call the database Alpha 5. You can name and save the file wherever you like. With that done, you're presented with a control panel and it's from here that we'll enter the application server's serial number. So we'll go to Tools, Application Server, and we'll click the Sessions tab. Next we'll click Add and enter our serial number. Once it's entered, it needs to be activated by pressing the Activate button here. On the General tab, we'll also want to check the box labeled Automatically Start the Server, which means that Alpha 5 will start the application server whenever Alpha 5 is restarted. OK. We're just about done, but there's one last step you might need to do depending on how your VPS account is configured and that step is to turn off the IIS web server. So let's see why and how to do that. When we got our GoDaddy account, and this is true with other accounts as well, the Microsoft Personal Web Server, also known as IIS, was automatically installed and activated for us. And because it's a web server, it's set to use port 80 to exchange information over the web. The problem is that the Alpha 5 application server also uses port 80 because it too is a web server. So if you try to activate Alpha 5 with IIS running, you'll get this error. The server cannot be started. Port 80 is already in use. So what we need to do is deactivate IIS. You won't need it because you have Alpha 5 as your web server. To deactivate IIS, we'll go to the Windows Start menu and choose Programs, Administrative Tools, Internet Information Services Manager the Internet Information Services Manager appears. In the pane on the left, expand the tree so that Websites is showing and click the Websites node. In the Properties on the right, look for any service that is running on port 80 and in each case right-click and choose Stop Service or better yet just delete the service altogether. With that done, you could go back to Alpha 5 and click the Application Server button to start the application server. This time there's no error message and the indicator button has turned green to indicate that Alpha 5 application server is now running. So now it's time to test. We'll start by opening a web browser and testing Alpha 5 by typing http colon slash slash localhost. Now because we haven't yet published anything to our website, we should get an error 403 telling us that directory browsing is not allowed. This means that we need to put at least one page on our site, so let's do that right now. We'll go to the Web Projects Control Panel by clicking the Web Projects button. At the Web Projects Control Panel, click the New button and choose A5W page. The HTML editor will appear. Go ahead and create a test page. You might type, Hello World, or something like that. You might also want to adjust the fonts or type sizes or colors. When the test page is to your liking, you can save it, and you should give it the file name index.a5w. Now that you've created a page, you need to publish it to the web root folder, so you'll click the Publish button. By the way, you have to save the page first or the Publish button will not be activated. Now that that's done, we'll go back to the web browser and click Refresh to load our page. And, ta-da! There's our page. Okay, it's one thing to see the page here on the inside of the VPS. The real test is to see if it can be accessed from the outside. To do that, let's go to Windows Start Menu and choose Disconnect. The Disconnect option will close your remote desktop session, but will leave Alpha 5 running. It's important that you always end your remote desktop sessions this way instead of choosing Log Off, otherwise Alpha 5 will stop running when you exit, which would defeat the whole purpose of having the web server. So with our session ended, we open up a web browser and type HTTP colon slash slash followed by our IP address. And sure enough, our Alpha 5 server is all set up and working. Congratulations, you've done it. Your web server is now accessible across the entire internet. Now there are a few refinements you might want to make later. For example, you probably want to get a domain name and point it to your IP address so you can type in an easy to remember domain name instead of a hard to remember number. I've set up this account to work with the domain ajaxvideotutorials.com and I did that by logging into my account at GoDaddy. 
and selecting the option Manage Domains. Most service providers have an option like this where they manage the domains and you simply tell it what IP address you want it to point to. If you plan to build your application on the server, you're now all set. But for many people, you want to build your application locally and then upload it to your VPS when it's ready. This means setting up FTP so Alpha can connect and upload files. To do this, we'll return to the Internet Information Services window on your remote desktop of your VPS. This option can be found under Administrative Tools at the Windows Start menu. Once the window is open, we'll click on the FTP Sites node this time, and we'll right-click and delete the default FTP site since we want to set up our own. Next, we'll right-click on FTP Sites and choose New FTP Site. The new FTP Site Creation Wizard appears. Click the Next button and give the site a name. We'll call it A5 Web Root. We'll skip over the Port Settings page and we'll choose Do Not Isolate Users. And then we'll click the Browse button to browse for our Web Root folder, which is located here at C colon backslash A5 Web Root. The last step is to indicate that we want both read and write access, and then we click Finish. We can now disconnect from remote desktop, and our server is now all set to receive files via FTP, which means we can publish our files from Alpha to our VPS whenever we want. But there's one last thing we need to do before we close out of this screen, and that is to block anonymous FTP access. Without blocking anonymous FTP access, it would be possible for other people to log into your FTP account and take a look at the files stored at the A5 web root, which we don't want for security reasons. To shut off A5 web root access, right-click again on the FTP sites, and this time choose Properties. Under Properties, choose Security Accounts, and uncheck the box labeled Allow Anonymous Connections. Well, that wraps it up for setting up the Alpha 5 application server on a VPS. I hope you found this useful. If you have any questions or comments about this video, please email guides at alphasoftware.com. From me, Dave McCormick, and the entire Alpha Software team, thank you for watching.